it's Brie. Welcome to Nectar and Nadine Chats episode four. Um, like I said, my name is Brie. I live in Baltimore. I've been knitting for about a year and a half now, two years, and I use this channel to share my work, uh, what I'm currently working on, finished projects, what I have planned, and just general knit related things that I have going on in my life. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different than others because I spent this past weekend at Maryland Sheep and Wool, which is a large festival in Maryland that brings all kinds of fiber folks together. And it was my first opportunity to attend such a large scale event like that. I had been to the Alpaca Festival in the fall, which was awesome, but a lot smaller. Maryland Sheep and Wool apparently is one of the largest in the country. So um, it's up there with Rhinebeck, I believe, which is another one that's on my fiber festival list. So I wanted to kind of talk about uh, my experience going there for the first time and what I picked up while I was there and uh, the projects that I have planned for the uh, purchases that I made. But before I get to that, it's been a while. I was actually in England for two weeks. I had a really amazing time. I'm going to do a little episode dedicated to that too because I picked up a few uh, British wools while I was there and in my travels. So I'd love to talk about those and the projects I've planned for those. And um, yeah, so it's just good to be back. I got up, I'm still jet lagged, so I'm getting up really early. So I figured I would run with that and film a little podcast. So what I'm wearing... I don't think I've worn this on the uh, podcast yet. So this is the Home Cardigan by Kydri, Kydri Sabina. Uh, this was a test knit and it's a um, oversized cardigan with nice like comfy sleeves and a big rib, loose rib cuff. I knit this in drops air held together with drops kid silk uh and i used a light color kind of like their uh, white and then i used a lavender color i couldn't tell you the color off the top of my head which created this cool marling effect and so i really like it so it come kind of comes across as like a very very light purple and i really like it so my cat has decided it's time to start playing with her toy so i hope that noise isn't too distracting. So anyway, I guess let's get to talking about Maryland sheep and wool. So I, I got home from England on Wednesday of last week and it was nice to have Maryland sheep and wool to look forward to. So I wasn't too sad after returning from my trip and it's a two day festival. It's located just outside of Baltimore, about 30 minutes outside the city in Howard County and it's at the Howard County Fairground. So I'd heard a lot about it and it's only $5 a day for admission. And so I have been planning on going for a while. And then it just, you know, fortunately our trip did not fall over the festival because I would have been really sad to miss it. But on Saturday, um, got up early, me and Steve went and we met up with some friends there and it was so muddy. It had been raining for the past several days. So the ground was really wet and the Howard County Fairgrounds uh, grounds only have so much parking on pavement. And so the festival was so well attended that there were a lot of people parking in the fields and I drove a very small car and it doesn't do so hot in anything that is not road. So I, we immediately got in and my friend who was already there texted me that several cars were already stuck in the mud. So I was like, oh boy, I think we're going to get stuck in the mud while we're here. Um, but we were just able to like sloosh up the hill and get parked in. And um, we got in and my first thought was, wow, this is really overwhelming. So there is just so many vendors. It was really unreal. So 
I also pop in different like footage that I took over the time while I was at the festival, just of the different things that I saw. I tried to get some good footage, but honestly, I was so overwhelmed that it was just, um, I was just trying to take it all in. So when you come in, there's tents, all kinds of tents set up side with people selling, you know, fiber and yarn and spinning materials and weaving supplies and punch needle supplies and rug needle stuff and, or sorry, rug making. And there were people selling soap and cheese and people who were selling finished objects, but then there were people who were selling um, just really all kinds of stuff. So there really is something for everyone. I mean, of course, if you are a knitter, weaver, crocheter, embroider, embroiderer, of course, if you're into fiber crafts, there's going to be more for you to see there. But if you aren't, there's still a ton to see and just admire. Um, I was on my first day, I was with some people who Steve supports my hobby and, you know, really enjoys that I get so much joy out of it. But, you know, and he likes yarn, but there's only so much that he can look at. So I could tell by the time we were leaving, he was ready to not be looking at yarn anymore, where I was like, I could be here for several more hours and be totally thrilled. So it was just funny, that dynamic, because I was going in, I was you know, touching everything. I was reading the labels. I was talking to the people at the booth. I was trying to see the fiber content, trying to think about what projects it aligned with and where, you know, Steve would come in and be like, this looks nice. This is soft. And then that was kind of where his like, okay, like I looked at it, I'm good. Um, so that was funny. So I did come in with a game plan. I came in with a list of projects that I have on my to make list that were in, I, I tried to pick projects where I wouldn't, I didn't pick sweater projects, full sweater projects intentionally because I knew that if I picked a full sweater quantity, that would be pretty much all I could afford because the, most of this fiber, a lot of it was like, directly from U.S. farms um, and so the it, it's just really high quality and so I knew the price point was going to be higher which I think is absolutely fair for the work and labor involved and the care involved in creating it but it did mean I, pro I cannot afford multiple sweater quantities of yarn um, and that was okay so I picked a couple different projects that I wanted to prioritize uh, fiber for and I think that was definitely the right move because I think if I had gone in there with absolutely no projects in mind I would have picked up just a bunch of single skeins and I've just learned from doing that in the past that it's not a great practice because then I'm just not totally sure what to do with the odd skein. I know uh, Caroline Snitz is running a I think oddball skein project knit along and so that's something I might check out, see what kinds of stuff make, cause I can make hats. I know I can always make hats. I wanna think about maybe making socks, but I knew coming into this that if I'm gonna buy something, I wanna have a project in mind so it doesn't just languish in my stash. So that was kind of my project plan. So the different things that we looked at, um, so there's all the boosts with the different fiber but then there are also all the booths or the farm, sorry, the barns that have all the different sheep. And so I just had no idea there were so many different sheep. So we spent a long time kind of like wandering through there, looking at the different sheep, seeing the different lambs. Um, they were doing kind of different competitions where people were winning uh, prizes uh, for the different, for their different you know, sheep, which I, I would love to learn more about because I, I'm, I've not grown up in a farming family. And so I think it would be interesting to learn about what are the things people are looking at in those competitions. We saw lots of lambs. There were some sheep for sale, which was intriguing. And it was just really cool to see. And some of them had like the sheep and then the kind of fiber that they were able to create from their fleece, which was really cool. There were fleeces for sale all different 
kinds of stuff. So we kind of walked through there and that was really fun. And there's just every kind of fiber there that you could have wanted. So there was like alpaca, there was of course wool, there was silk, cashmere, there was, you know, cotton, um, 100% linen, and there was superwash, non-superwash, organic, non-organic. So really there's something for everyone. I One of my other goals coming in was I did not want to buy superwash yarn. I have a lot of superwash yarn, so I'd like to kind of play around with properties of different yarns. And I also wanted to explore some different summer yarn options because I'm not a huge fan of 100% cotton. So I went in knowing that I have projects in mind that I want to wear in the warmer weather. And so I wanted to experiment with something that might be a little nicer for that. So the other thing that was really, really cool was they had an opportunity. Sorry, I need a sip of coffee. They had skein and garment competitions where you could submit your garment that you had knitted since the past festival and or a skein or not and not just knitted they had weaving they had crochet they had um embroidery I believe and there were a couple different categories so for knitting or crochet there was a category where it's like hand knitted with commercial yarn which is basically any yarn that you did not make yourself and then there's hand knitted with yarn that you spun yourself so those were like two different categories and then they had you know hand knitted by yourself multiple colors commercial yarn single color different you know different kinds of categories within that and then there were prizes for if you used something like wool from within maryland and that kind of stuff and so i missed that on saturday i couldn't i think i was just so overwhelmed i had a really hard time navigating i just didn't look at my map or anything like that and so on Saturday I totally missed it and then to be honest it was so muddy on Saturday that I was really concerned about coming back on Sunday and it just being worse because there had been more rain there had been more cars coming in and out but I left and I just wasn't quite I'm on Saturday I made one purchase I was really really happy with the purchase but I hadn't purchased for any of my other projects and there were a bunch of booths that I didn't get to see um, but I didn't want to hold up the rest of my party because obviously I was the slowest of the bunch and I wanted us all to leave together in case our cars got stuck. So I kind of decided I'm going to wake up, go first thing on Sunday, and I'm going to prioritize all the areas I didn't see yet. So I, I did that. And then because I got there so early on Sunday and because Sunday isn't as desirable of a day to go... I was actually able to park on their actual lot uh, so there was pavement and so that was a huge relief to me I didn't have to worry that my car was gonna get stuck I and I'm I know I've shared before I'm a really anxious human and I know it sounds silly but the day before the parking situation was kind of hanging over my head the whole day so it just kept raining kept raining kept raining while we were there for hours and all I could think was like the longer I'm here the more likely it is that my car is not going to be able to get out and then I might have to get a tow and that's going to cost a lot of money and just like all of this stuff so I just and I couldn't stop fixating on that it ended up being totally fine and then the next day I just made a plan and I called my dad I said just in case you know I might need out and my dad has a truck and he can always pull me out and he even offered for me to take it but it ended up being totally for not and the first thing I went to on Sunday was I went direct to the skein and garment competition and wow I played with the idea of submitting my shifty sweater but then I didn't because I 
was having major imposter syndrome. I was like, is this really that good? You know, I don't know what kinds of things they're looking for. I, you know, I'm still a relatively new knitter. And I'm really glad I didn't submit it because I have to say the work that I saw there was truly astounding. I've never seen projects so well constructed. Um, I, I took some pictures and footage of the different uh prize winners but then also just general I mean the weaving was beautiful the knitting was beautiful people's skeins that they had done I mean they were so well spun that I could have bought that in the store and I would never know it was hand spun and just really absolutely gorgeous work so I just was amazed by the craftsmanship so I'm really really glad I got the opportunity to go over there and then um for the second place in commercial yarn in multiple colors was this like gorgeous dress. I could just tell the fit of it would have been stunning. I believe it was a like a brioche two color dress. It just, oh my gosh, was absolutely stunning. So I will I did take a, a picture of it. I'll pop it in here. And so I saw that and I was like, what could possibly beat this dress? Because it just was so well done. I just couldn't believe it. And then I was kind of walking around and then I found the first place for knitting and I was like, it was crazy. I was admiring it. I was taking pictures. It's this beautiful color work cardigan. Um, it was by a famous designer. I will pop the information in the description because I cannot tell you the name off the top of my head, but everybody knew it and I just, I didn't but I was admiring it and then there was this couple standing next to me and the man goes she made that and it was just so funny it was so classic like the knitter in her probably was dying to say like oh yeah like that's my garment but her husband was the one who finally came out and was like she did that and I just loved that he was hyping her up like that it was so great and so it was really awesome to get the opportunity to talk to her about it. I said, your work is beautiful. Like, how did you construct it? And it's fair aisle knitting, knit flat, and then seam together in panels. And her, her color work, I, I'm, fair aisle color work is, is beautiful. I really struggle with it. Um, but, and I told her that, and she said, just practice, practice, practice. And Wow, I mean, her work, no gapping. The color choices were just absolutely stunning. It's such an intricate pattern. The The shape of the garment was really unique. She said the designer of the garment, of the jacket, she runs a class and that's how you get her patterns as you will do like a class with her while you're, while, and and I think apparently it's really, really difficult to get into the class and I imagine it's quite expensive. And then you use her yarns, the designer's yarns for the project. But it was just really great getting to talk to her. She also won another prize too because she had this beautiful color work knitted beret and she was so sweet. She just was like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. She was so happy. She was like grinning from ear to ear. You could tell her, um, partner was just so supportive of her and really excited for her and he said the cardigan he was like trust me it was teamwork because I was running around the house like trying to find the right color that she needed for the next section and you know helping her keep track of things and so I just it was so lovely getting to meet them I'll have to look up her name but I'll definitely put pictures in here because it just truly was just an unbelievable garment I was texting my friend about it and I just was like, I swear that could have, that could be in a museum for, you know, it's just a really beautiful piece of art. And so I just was really amazed by that. So that was definitely a highlight. And then after that, I wandered the fields and got really muddy boots um, and like just really enjoyed my time it, it was kind of nice 
I really enjoyed being there with Steve and with my friends, but I, it, I did really enjoy going by myself because then I got the opportunity to really just take my time um, because I, I am a slow browser. I like squish it, I think about it, I try to imagine it. In the piece that I want, I double check the yardage amount for my project. So I definitely am, you know, I just take my time. And, and there was so much to see that, I mean, I could have bought from so many different booths, but I just wanted something different um, than what I might normally get. And I wanted, um, I don't know, like I said, I was, I was trying to try different yarns uh, from what I've been using. And so I think I succeeded. I am going to show you guys what I got, but before I do that, I am going to go grab, I forgot I have like one finished object since last time I talked. So I'm going to go grab that real quick. So I'll bring it back. Okay. So my finished object, when I was here in Europe, I brought one project with me and I finished one project. So I think I did some proper, proper planning for my trip. So I guess it's technically two finished objects because I finished socks. So these are the I'm So Basic Socks by Summerlee Knits. And they are knit up in Polar Bear Yarns. It's a sock set that she had last summer. And it was just a, a monthly club release based off this like really beautiful picture. I love them. I think they're so cute. I've been wearing them nonstop. I'm going to put them on right now. Um, they are looking a little worse for wear. They, I learned a lot. Kitchener stitch, my first Kitchener stitch. And I think they fit pretty good. Sorry, I know you don't really want to see my feet. Or maybe you do. Um, I think they fit pretty good. So, I'm pretty happy with how they came out. I think I would like them to be a little tighter next time. I, I kind of went against my gut. I knit the medium size based off the measurement that I took of my feet, but I have really narrow feet, so I think I needed to knit the smaller size. And so they do fit, and they're a little slouchy around my calves. I think I have kind of skinny legs, um, but they fit pretty good on my feet. So I think next time I would just knit down and just expect them to fit a little tighter and I think I would like that because socks generally do fit kind of tight so but I love them I didn't mind Kitchener stitch once I got the hang of it the this one was a heel flap construction which I didn't mind um, I do want to try out a few different heel constructions so I already have yarn for another pair of socks and then I got some more sock yarn sort of that I'll talk about in a minute. But yeah, I'm super happy with them. I definitely will be making more socks. They were the perfect project for the plane and the trains because they're portable. And then honestly, once you get past the heel, like once you get to the heel and get past the heel, it's a lot of just stocking it, you know? So it was a nice kind of like, didn't have to think about it too much. I used, the Chai Gu shorties and they were great. I really like them. They definitely take some adjustment, but once I got into them, they were great. So you have to just hold, they're really small. So you just have to kind of hold them differently. But enough about that. So now we're on to acquisitions. So I'm prefacing this with the past several weeks. I have gotten a lot of yarn. So just get ready for that. If you, I recently also did clear out my stash and I donated my super bulky acrylic and wool blend yarn because I kept holding on to it saying, I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use it. And I haven't touched it in a year, so it's time to go. So I'm going to donate it to Scrap. And now as a result, I'm going to have a stash that is more geared towards what I like to use. And so I think, you know, I think I'm... I've been kind of playing with that idea for a while, but anyway, that all being said, I have a lot of yarn, so if that feels weird to you, then this is probably not going to be your part of this video, but if you want to hear about different acquisitions and different 
fibers that I picked up from Maryland Sheep and Wool, then this might be for you. So take a sip. So my first purchase was on Saturday and I came across this booth called O Wool, which was for organic wool and they are a retailer who sources organic and more natural fibers. And I was drawn to one of their products because I have a test net coming up uh, where I'm working on a test net right now. It's for the, uh, it's the Remy Camisole by Kadri. I will pop a picture right here. And I wanted something that was not cotton. Her fiber was cashmere. So I actually went into the fiber festival looking for cashmere. I did not get cashmere because the cashmere at the festival was fairly priced, but fairly priced out of my budget. So I think it would have cost me almost $200 to get the amount of fiber I needed in cashmere. So I did not do that. I would love to make a cashmere garment one day, but today is not that day. But I was looking for something for this cami. I wanted something maybe in a color I didn't already have, but I wanted it to kind of be a neutral that I could kind of wear with whatever. I want to get a lot of wear out of it. So I came across this really pretty sage green. So it's, um, it's coming across more like khaki, but it's slightly more green. That's actually not too far from the color. So it is really, really soft. It's certified organic. Um, so it's 100% organic merino extra fine wool. It is really, really, really soft. So it's by Rosy Green Wool and it's lovely merino treat. And so, all right, here's what the description says. Better wool made in a better way. You've made a good choice. For an extra fine wool from Patagonia that pampers your senses and is guaranteed to be ethically produced. All rosy green wools are 100% GOTS certified, which means they carry the strictest international organic textile label. Our producers and we are dependent, independently inspected on a regular basis with regard to organic animal farming, fair working conditions, chemicals, and residues. The yarn is spun with traditional craftsmanship in small manufacturers. It hardly splits and it pills as little as possible. It is machine washable without the use of chlorine. I didn't know it was machine washable. Look at that. Start your new knitting project with the fulfilling feeling of handling wool that has been made without mulesling and chemical sheep dips and with great care and respect for the environment. Happy sheep, happy people, which I really like. Um, it is really, really soft. So it's in the color 148 or reed. And yeah, so it is... 100 grams, 230 yards. So it's like a DK weight, which is what I needed. So I think it's maybe, it's like between a DK and worsted, but it is really soft. It honestly kind of feels like a cotton. So I'm hoping it feels like a cotton, but with the good properties of wool. So the elasticity is, is the main thing I'm looking for. I want it to be able to hold its shape because I find cotton doesn't do that as well. Maybe I'm just doing something wrong. I like cotton and like this is cotton. I like that, but I don't know, knitting, it's just not my favorite. But here it is caked up. I'm caked up one of it. Um, so, and here is my swatch. So I did have to go down a needle size, but um, it's nice and stretchy. It's really, really soft, so I think it'll make a nice, and I like I like the fabric it's made, so I think this will be good. So that was my first, so like I said, that's for the Remy Cami, which is a test that you will be seeing on my feed very, very soon. So then my next purchase was first thing on Saturday, I got back in, I mean, sorry, first thing on Sunday, got back in, I was perusing one of the booths, and I found Batten Kill, fiber mill, which is a fiber mill that they make their, they spin their own fiber, but they also spin for a lot of different 
um, yarn, like larger yarn companies. And so I was just kind of perusing their stuff and I really liked it. It felt a little bit more natural. It felt more rustic than what I'm used to. And I was kind of talking to them about the different projects and I, I asked them, I was like, you know, I'm really looking for something I can use in the summer, something a little lighter. And they were like, well, don't you know, we have this linen blend that is really, really nice for the summer. So it is a wool and linen blend. And I was looking at it and I really like it. It smells straight up like sheep. It, it looks like sheep. I mean, it's un, I think it's undyed. It's a little bit of a rougher texture than I've used before, but I they had a shawl that I had been knit in and it actually comes out really soft and it knits up really nicely. So I was appreciative, another thing, is like why I love a sample because then you can really see it in action and it comes out really really nice and so I got this and I was speaking to the woman who runs the mill and she was like you know what like we I asked her the price because it wasn't labeled and she was like you know what we're down to our last five skeins it's an amount that not a lot of people want to work with because it's not a large amount and I asked her what the yardage was and she told me and five skeins is exactly right for the project I was looking for. So I wanna make the Moonset Tea by um, Ozetta. And it's just this really lovely light V-neck um, t-shirt. And I wanted it in kind of just like a classic summer color. And so I needed um, 900 yards and the amount I got was about a thousand. So she gave me a great deal. So I got all of this for like $35. So I am super, super excited about that. So I, that was the first thing that happened to me on Sunday. So I was like, all right, I'm in the right place. So that was my second purchase. Then the day before I was talking to my friends mom who was there and she had told her I was trying to move into different yarns. She's been knitting for about 30 years and she really likes using rustic yarns too and or she uses more rustic yarns which is something I wanted to try more of and so she pointed me towards a couple different booths. The first one she said she really loves is Jill Draper Make Stuff, which I don't know how I'd never heard of her. Maybe because I've been using a lot of Superwash and her work is not. But she had a beautiful, Jill Draper Make Stuff had a beautiful booth in the main exhibit. And I was immediately drawn to this gorgeous skein. I mean, look, it's the same color as my couch. Oh, that's funny. I, did, I didn't notice. Um, we will call this couch maroon. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I do love this color. Um, I think I also, I mean, I think it looks nice with my hair. I just love like a wine purple color. So this is from Jill Draper Makes Stuff. It's called Lee Trillium. It is a lace weight wool and alpaca blend. So I immediately was drawn to this and I wanted to make something with it. I just love the color. I was trying to think what I could, if I could hold it double, you know, and so I was talking to the people at the booth and they were super helpful and really, really friendly. And I had a project in mind and so I was just trying to see if this would work for it. So the project I had in mind was the Cold Shoulder Crop by Parkin Knit. And so I, I showed it to them, I looked at the yardage and we decided kind of the, I could either hold this double and it would be more like a sheer open garment or I could hold it double with something else and it would, you know, work out. So I decided to hold it double with this, which is, as you can see, it, it's a really, really close color match. So I think it'll have slight variation, which will be really nice, but it won't be, um, it won't be too overwhelming. So I have these three skeins and that's gonna be the cold shoulder crop by Parkin Knit. So I'm really excited. Then I wandered around a little bit more and I got out to the fields and I found a standby B 
Beater Book Farms, which is a farm here in Maryland. I actually had a skein of theirs gifted to me, so I wanted to see them. So my friend Mandy from Rosie Pussy Design Co. gifted me this gorgeous skein. And this is, um, I think it's a DK weight. I would have to look up, but I mean, it's just like gorgeous. So this is one of those kind of like meant to look hand spun, uh, gradient yarns. I mean, it's gorgeous. I really love it. And it's super squishy. It's really soft. So I wanted to go to their booth and see their yarn. I took video. They have so many gorgeous colors. And they had a bunch of like, they had fiber like this, but then they had a bunch of different fiber that I thought was really interesting. So the first thing that I was immediately drawn to was their alpaca blend because I have been wanting to make the tourney slip over by the Knit Pearl Girl. I met Sophie in England, she's an absolute delight. And so I've been wanting to make her project and her yarn is an alpaca based yarn it's the baby wool I believe and so I wanted something that I could you know try similar fiber content and so I got these three skeins of this kind of marled gray and it is a merino alpaca blend and so I think it'll just make like a really fun kind of stitchy slip over I've never made a slip over before I'm really looking forward to it I will have to figure out how to style one, so I'm gonna have to look around for that, but I'm pretty excited and it's just really nice. So two of these skeins are like very, very marled. One is not because they did not have three of the marled ones, but I loved it so much. So what I'm gonna do is just alternate skeins and I believe it'll be totally fine. So I'll just alternate this one with like this one and I think it'll all blend really well. So. I'm looking forward to that. And then those were all projects that I had planned to maybe purchase for coming in. And then while I was at Feeder Book Farms, I saw that they had a DK weight with bio nylon in it. So it's a nylon derived from, I forget what plan it was, but I've been wanting, after I made my first pair of socks, I want to make Steve a pair of socks, but Steve's feet are really big and so the idea of making him socks with sock weight yarn was like oh wow like that's gonna take a really long time I think it would probably take at least twice as long as making the ones I made for myself so when I saw they had a DK weight yarn that had nylon in it I was like oh my gosh like I can make him some DK weight socks so I got him these two skeins of like this fun light gray and this marled it's got light blue kind of marled into it and so i think that'll make like two pairs of socks um which is kind of heel toe one you know heel toe in the other and it yeah it's a merino bio nylon combination um 260 yards each so i think yeah i think he'll really love that his feet get really cold so I love the idea of him being able to wear handmade socks that I knit him. And I asked them, I was like, oh, do you guys do online orders? And she was like, well, you can always come up to the farm. So I think Steve and I are gonna have to go up to their farm at some point because I would really love to visit a farm, so. All right, well. I think that's everything so as you can tell I went a little crazy I definitely did not think I would get quite this much fiber but I'm really happy with my purchases they're all really different and I think are gonna open up some new different fiber contents for me which I'm really excited about and I'm moving towards a handmade wardrobe so I think these pieces are gonna get me just a little bit closer to that goal so I'm really excited I appreciate you sticking with me. I am definitely going to be going back next year as long as I'm able. And let me know if you have any questions about my experience 
or if you were there, what did you pick up? Um, are any of these fibers exciting to you or any of them you're like, oh, like I don't want to use that. And then if you guys have DK weight socks, I think I already have a pair of recommendation from Polar Bear Yarn, so I have to look at those. But anyway, I will have another episode out soon about my trip to England, so I'm looking forward to that. And yeah, thanks for uh, chatting with me. Bye.